Well, I think first of all, I would say that the, the specialties in infectious disease, we are lacking, at least two decades lacking behind the development of the United States uh, in the development of uh, infectious disease as a specialty. Uh, in Singapore, we're only beginning to realise the importance of infectious disease and uh, decided to embark on the establishment of these specialties somewhere around later part of the 80s. And I happen to have the privilege to be the first group of pioneer infectious disease trainees uh, to take up these uh, subspecialties. So I must say that over the years, I think by now it's uh, almost like three decades of infectious disease. Uh, we have grown from strength to strength and hopefully you know, we are moving towards the correct directions in further strengthening our field. Well, I think the first thing is you have to be really hard working. The first thing that we learn on infectious disease is that it is a non-organ specific, multi-systemic kind of approach to patients' problems and issues. And therefore, first of all, you know, we have to be well equipped in understanding different system, different organs, and be able to apply the basic principles on infectious disease uh, treatment. Uh, and I must say that, you know, in the first and second generations of infectious disease physicians in Singapore, our typical work hours is start right early in the morning and we finish seeing our cases, finish seeing our infectious disease consultations right into very late at night. So that possibly set the, the tone in terms of how infectious disease subspecialty is like and also the time and effort that we have to devote into this particular subspecialty. And I think the other characteristic uh, at, that, at that point in time uh, was the fact that infectious disease possibly have no private market value. So in other words, it is a very institutional kind of practice where most of us will have to be prepared to spend the rest of our career supporting the hospital. So in the 80s, we had to deal with a lot of communicable types of infectious diseases, conditions like typhoid, cholera, malaria. And of course, you know, in the late 80s, uh, we're beginning to see uh, HIV uh, emerging in Singapore. So those were the key conditions that many of us uh, were managing. Then over the years, we realised the importance of intra-hospital transmissions, nosocomial transmissions, and also the uh, emergence of multi-drug resistance organisms. So that adds into another element. Uh, of challenges in terms of infectious disease management. But what is more important, in fact, was in the year 1999, when we encountered our first recent years of emerging infection outbreak. That was the Nipah outbreak that uh, we had experienced. And that likely have changed a lot of landscapes in terms of how we deal with infectious disease today. Uh, I would like to start from Nipah. In the year 1999, um, I would like to say that Nipah, although it, it is a much smaller scale of outbreak due to uh, novel pathogens, but it has taught us a lot of lessons that we had never known or learned before. And those were very useful lessons that we applied during the SARS outbreak. And I would say that um, for every outbreak that we encounter and we have gone through, we learn from each episode of outbreak that will only make us better and better prepare for the future ones. So everyone gave us the experience and the learning point to be applied for the future. I think for dengue and chikungunya, both are vector-borne conditions. So first of all, I would say that it is not solely a medical issue. It is a multi-sectorial issue that we need to work together with uh, colleagues from other fields like the vector controls, environmental cleanliness uh, kind of approach. Then secondly, I would say that uh, we recognise the importance of dengue as a significant public health issue in Singapore. Relatively a little bit late, uh, we only realise the importance because it has caused significant healthcare burdens in Singapore. But over the years, uh, we have managed to put in more resources to understand what would be the optimal management of dengue cases in Singapore and also our unique features, unique characteristic of our own demographic uh, with regards to dengue. 
Uh, and it's fortunate that I must say that a lot of these efforts has bear fruits in a way, uh, in the way that uh, we can manage the patients in an optimal way and uh, be able to cope with the large number of dengue cases with the best outcome, with minimal impact in terms of the healthcare system burdens. Institute of uh, Infectious Disease and Epidemiology, in short, we call it IIDE, uh, is, is a purposefully established uh, institute that with the aim to bring the entire specialties into a different horizons, a different era. That will be when the establishment of National Centre of Infectious Disease up and running in the year 2018 and 2019. So the sole purpose is to be able to advance human capitals, human capabilities, and that will allow us to build a much stronger specialties in infectious disease coupled with epidemiology. And that gave us the ability to protect the entire nations in outbreak, as well as to provide best care in infectious diseases. Communicable Disease Centre, or CDC, is a clinical provision area, uh, primarily supporting the ministry in outbreak response as the first outbreak clinical response site. In addition to that, it has a very strong history in terms of HIV management. So all these background expertise that being built over the years will then move to the new center, center National Center for Infectious Disease. So each will contribute separately and together as an integrated bodies. Our very first HIV zero positive patients was detected in 1985. So we are almost like three decades into the HIV uh, era. It has, we have gone a long way in HIV management from completely without any medications to partially available medications to where we are today in terms of the accessibility of anti-HIV medications to our patients. So today we are happy to say that any of the Singaporean who needs to be treated with HIV medications will be provided with the treatment. And you can see the treatment has changed from a deadly disease to a chronic disease that requires lifelong medications. And I believe that many of the HIV positive individuals who remain in good care will have a much better life expectancy and life outcome compared to the general populations. But what is more important is the mindset and acceptance of people with HIV infections. And I think we are making good progressions uh, and we have to continue to make the progressions uh, to give us a, a better future. I mean, looking at the recent years' development, I think it's very clear that emerging infectious disease is one of the significant challenge uh, to everyone globally uh, in the field of infectious disease. And I am hopeful that Singapore, with the past experience, and building up of our expertise, we will be better prepared to handle future outbreaks if it comes, and I think it will come. For the field of infectious disease, I think it has evolved over the past three decades, and I'm confident that uh, we have now attained good and reasonable level of patient management, of our academic advancement in the field of infectious disease, what I'm hoping to move forward is that we can apply uh, this knowledge into best patient care as well as be the leader in this field, not only nationally but as well as be a recognised body in the region as well as internationally. Please join the field of infectious disease. <laughs>